Okay, Debbie, could you pop onto the couch for an examination? Yes. As I watch the patient get on the couch, I'm looking for discomfort, ease of movement, or breathlessness. I'm also looking for any signs of jaundice or abdominal distension. And if I were on the ward, I'd be looking for items around the bed, drips, catheters, and such like. Now, if I could start with your hands, please. In the hands, I'm looking at the nails for signs of clubbing, leukonychia, or coilonychia. I'm also looking for palmar erythema, or any evidence of Dupuytren's contractures. I also feel the pulse, noting the rate and rhythm to assess general fitness. And if the patient is jaundiced and I suspect liver failure, I would test for a liver flap. Now, if I could look in your eyes, could you look up for me, please? In the eyes, I'm looking at the conjunctivi for anemia and the sclera for jaundice. Could you open your mouth for me, please? In the mouth, I'm looking for ulcers, the dry mouth of dehydration, or any disorders of the tongue. Could you stick out your tongue, please? Thanks, that's fine. Now, I'd like to feel your neck. Could you sit forward for me, please? The supracavicular nodes need to be carefully palpated, paying particular attention to the left side, where the classical Virchow's node is associated with GI malignancy. Now, I'd like to ask you to lie flat. Are you, are you okay just with one pillow? Yes. Hang on, let me just do that. That's good. Ideally, the patient should be supine for the abdominal examination, but some patients are too breathless to lie flat, and you may just have to make do. They need to be exposed from above the costal margin to the, to the groins with hands by the side. Could you just lift up your top? Mm -hmm and slip your skirt down a little, just so I can see your abdomen. That's good, and hands by your side. I'm now inspecting the abdomen for scars, asymmetry, distension, dilated veins, and visible peristalsis. Now, I'd like to feel your abdomen. Have you got any pain anywhere? No. When feeling the abdomen, I palpate all nine areas, first superficially and then deeply, starting away from any that are known to be painful. Note that the correct position is at the same level as the patient, so that I'm able to watch her face for any pain. I'm palpating with the flat of my fingers, bending at the knuckles and not digging in. And now for the deep palpation. If I feel a mass, I take note of its size, shape, and position. I now test for rebound tenderness by pressing in deeply and then releasing my hand. If this exacerbates any pain, it's a sign of peritoneal irritation. I'm now going to see if the liver is palpable. Could you take a few deep breaths in and out? Feeling as before, I start in the right iliac fossa and move upwards 
pressing in as the patient inhales. Okay, just relax. The liver is not normally palpable, but if you do feel a liver, then you should assess its size and its edges by percussion. Is it hard, soft, knobbly, or tender? Could you take some deep breaths in and out again? For the spleen, I start palpation in the right iliac fossa and move diagonally up towards the left hypochondrium, pressing in as the patient inhales. The spleen is not normally palpable, but enlarges along the line of the ninth rib and moves downwards and inwards on inspiration. It is dull to percussion and has a notched border. To palpate the left kidney, place your left hand under the patient's left loin. Could you just roll towards me and back? And your right hand in front and try to belot the kidney between your hands. And the same for the other side. If you could just roll away and back again. The kidneys are not normally palpable, but you may feel the lower pole of the right kidney in a thin person. If the abdomen is distended and I suspect ascites, then I would test for shifting dullness and a fluid thrill. Traditionally, we percuss all nine areas, leaving any tender ones until last, and paying particular attention to any masses you may have felt. I would expect all regions to be resonant like this, rather than dull like that. Now I'd like to listen for bowel sounds. I usually listen in the right iliac fossa. You may need to listen for a while if the bowel sounds are quiet and tinkling bowel sounds are characteristic of intestinal obstruction. To complete examination of the abdominal system, you should examine the hernial orifices and external genitalia and perform a rectal examination.